All right, now we're going to look for empirical evidence for this idea of information locality in three forms. So we're going to look for evidence that syntactic dependencies really do correspond to word pairs with high mutual information. We're going to look for a large-scale corpus evidence for information locality beyond dependency locality. And we're going to have two case studies, one of adjective order in English, the other of the order of verbal dependence in Hindi, providing evidence for this idea. So the first thing that we want to show is that it is indeed true that those word pairs and syntactic dependencies have are distinguished by high mutual information. If that's true, then we can see dependency locality as a kind of approximation to information locality, or as a kind of information locality effect. So what I'm going to show here is the empirical mutual information among word pairs in a number of different kinds of relationship. In red, we have words in a direct head dependent relationship. In blue, we're going to have words in an indirect dependency relationship. In green, we're going to have words that are both sisters. They are dependents of the same head. And we're calculating mutual information here not between word forms of x and y, but rather between the part of speech tags. The reason for that is data sparsity. The universal dependencies corpora are not big enough for us to get a reliable estimate of PMI based on word forms, so we use part of speech tags instead. Here's what we find. Across all languages, it is indeed the words in syntactic dependency relationships which have the highest mutual information, followed by sisters followed by indirect dependencies. And you can check out the citations there for more corpus studies which show this same point. You can also make a a priori argument that this relationship has to hold based on um, the basic idea of what a syntactic dependency means. The next thing I want to show is just general corpus evidence for information locality. The basic prediction here is just that words that have high PMI are going to be close to each other. That should be true for words in dependency relationships and for words that are not in dependency relationships. So here we have the empirical PMI among words at different distances in the universal dependencies corpora, again calculated using part of speech tags. In red, we have the mutual information of, of heads and dependents, and in blue, we have words, all other words that are, whether they're in a syntactic dependency or not, they're just at some distance. And what we see is that we do see this fall off of PMI with distance. So the words with high PMI are close across languages. We also see that this is true for syntactic dependencies and for other word pairs, both the red and the blue. And we see that here, there's also more evidence here for this idea that syntactic dependencies have the highest mutual information. The red line is always above the blue line. And the stars in this figure are actually significance numbers for that difference between the red and the blue line at that distance. We can make this a bit more precise. So I fit a regression predicting the distance between two words in a dependency relationship as a function of the PMI of the part of speech tags of those two words. Regression looks like this. You're trying to model the distance between two words in independency, and you're trying to model it using a function that looks like this. It's beta zero, a scalar, plus beta times the PMI of the words. Now, if this coefficient beta comes out negative in the regression, that means that words with high PMI are attracted to each other. And running this regression now across uh, many languages from universal dependencies tree banks, we find indeed a negative coefficient with roughly the same effect size across the different languages. The only exceptions here are very small corpora. And in fact, the, the estimate is basically minus 0.3 across languages. So if two words have one bit of PMI, then they are on average 0.3 words closer to each other across languages. So now we're going to look at the ability of information locality to explain adjective order. So what do I mean by adjective order? If you have cases of multiple adjectives modifying the same noun, in English, they have a certain preferred order that they go in. So you can say the pretty red Italian car, I give that a thumbs up because it sounds okay. But if I say it in a different order, like the red pretty Italian car or these other orders, they sound kind of weird, or maybe they sound like they're expressing some kind of different marked meaning. The default order is pretty red Italian car and nothing else. 
The hope is that information locality can explain this because in information locality, essentially, if there is high PMI between Italian and car, there's like a very strong dependency between them and they need to be very close. Whereas maybe red has less PMI with car, maybe pretty has even less PMI with car, corresponding to weaker attraction among them. And other languages other than English have similar ordering preferences to these. So we did a corpus study of adjective order in English. This was a logistic regression study trying to predict the order of these structures that we call AAN triples. We're trying to predict the order of these things both in the Universal Dependencies Web Tree Bank for English and also a large automatically parsed subset of the English Common Crawl parsed using SyntaxNet. An AAN triple is something that looks like this. It's something that has part of speech noun as the head and then it has two dependents each with relation type a mod and part of speech edge in a dependency tree bank. And we model their order using a logistic regression that looks like this. So you're trying to predict whether the, the triple goes in the order a1a2n versus a2a1n. And you predict that by looking at the PMI between a1 and the noun, comparing that to the PMI of a2 and the noun. Now to get the estimates of PMI, we are going to need to get the PMI between word forms. We do that by collecting up these structures that we call AN pairs from the automatically parsed common crawl. So these are things that have a noun as the head, an adjective as the dependent, and relation type A mod. Regardless of the order, we can collect up these pairs. We get a giant collection of nouns and adjectives and AN pairs. And then we can estimate the joint distribution of noun word forms and adjective word forms by a maximum likelihood estimation on those counts. We also want to explore the ability of other predictors of adjective order to explain the data here. So there are other predictors which are either competing or complementary to information locality as explain explainers of adjective order. One of these is subjectivity. More subjective adjectives are known to go farther from the adjective. You can tell how a subjective something is by asking someone on Mechanical Turk, how subjective is this adjective? Then these other two information theoretic predictors, integration cost and information gain. The inter integration cost is essentially conditional entropy of the noun given the adjective. Information gain is something like how well the adjective partitions the distribution of nouns. So now running individual regressions with each of these predictors for adjective order, we get these results in the common crawl corpus we find that PMI and subjectivity have the best accuracy, this is high 60s accuracy, in predicting the order of the triplets. In the English web tree bank, much smaller but hand parsed, we get the same result. PMI and subjectivity are the best two predictors. The error bars are bigger now though. So we found that PMI and subjectivity are the strongest predictors of adjective order. In as much as PMI is successful, this is evidence for an information locality effect in explaining adjective order preferences. Uh, as for PMI and subjectivity, should we think about these as competing theories or maybe two different instantiations of the same underlying thing? I don't know. I'll just point out though that they're highly correlated with each other and future work is going to try to disentangle these things empirically and also theoretically. A second case study now is the order of verbal dependence in Hindi. So we're going to apply the same logistic regression setup to predict the relative order of subjects, direct objects, indirect objects, and adjuncts modifying verbs in Hindi. Hindi is verb final, so the verb's always the last thing. The predictors here are going to be animacy, so animate words, words referring to living things, are known to go earlier in sentences. Case marking, because a case marked argument might have more freedom in its word order. Semantic similarity with the verb, and the PMI with the verb instantiating information locality. The data set here is 5 million sentences, which were automatically parsed using an ISC parser, which was trained on the Hyderabad dependency tree bank. PMI now is not going to be estimated among word forms. We weren't able to get stable estimates using word forms. Rather, it's estimated using super tags. These are part of speech tags that are augmented essentially with the argument structure of verbs, according to a Paninian grammar. And the logistic regression coefficients we get when we try to predict the order among these different dependency types are these. 
So a negative coefficient means that the thing with the higher value is going later in the sentence that is closer to the verb. So HDMI, that's the PMI effect with the verb. It's negative for all these comparisons. So the thing with higher PMI to the verb always goes closer to it. We also see that the animate things go earlier as expected and case marking and similarity have um, case marking, case marked things also go earlier. So we again see an information locality effect in this domain. So just concluding this section, I'd like to point out that this idea of locality is actually a really old idea. And I think information locality formalizes a really venerable intuition in linguistics. So this guy Otto Behagel was a German in the early 20th century doing quantitative linguistics. And he had this generalization, which is that there are various forces at work shaping word order rules. The highest law is this, things that belong together mentally should be placed close together. Now, this is taken as a precursor of dependency locality, but I think it's really much more general. So what does it mean for things to belong together mentally? That's a bit vague. This idea has also been restated as things like the proximity principle, the relevance principle, and the functionalist literature. I'd like to propose that these ideas of mental closeness from Bahagel here, these things like relevance, these are all just mutual information. This core intuition about this underlying organizing principle of the order of elements in language might just be information locality.